everybody, my name is Elizabeth Gandy and I'm here at Marie Selby Botanical Gardens to welcome you to the Sarasota Manatee Ecoflora EcoQuest Challenge for the month of October. Or should I say October? Because this month you are going to do the Okey Pokey because we are, guess what, making observations and iNaturalists of our lovely oak trees. So why do we want observations of oak trees? Well, for one thing, oak trees are extremely important to the ecology of our area. Large oak trees, tree-sized oak trees like this one here, their branches provide really important shade and help to regulate the moisture and temperature microclimate of the forest habitats where they live. They are also a really important habitat for wildlife wherever they occur. And these little Little things called acorns are super important food source for birds and mammals because they can pick them right now and store them over the winter so they have a source of food during lean times. They also have uh, many, oak, many species of oaks have a rough bark that's really conducive to epiphyte growth. And as you know, we love epiphytes here at Selby Gardens where it's our specialty. Most of us are familiar with the large tree-like oaks that we find in our yards and neighborhoods, trees like the live oak or the laurel oak. But what many people may not realize is we have 11 species of oaks here in the Sarasota Manatee area, and many of them actually don't even turn into trees, usually. Some of them are not even waist-high shrubs, such as dwarf live oak, and others are only large shrubs, such as the scrub oak or sand live oak, when they're found in habitats that are maintained by fire. So these are oaks that can be found in some of our natural areas around the counties. So areas such as uh, Oscar Shearer State Park is a good place to go and find scrubby oaks. Also in South, uh, South Sarasota County, you might be able to go to Minnesota Scrub. Up in Manatee County, you might go to Duet or Wright Wilderness or Lake Manatee State Park. Those are all excellent places amongst many others where you can go and find oaks that are in scrubby habitats. These are really important for species such as our are endemic Florida scrub jay, which means it doesn't occur anywhere else except in Florida. And they are dependent exclusively on a very specific set of um, set and size of oak scrub. Without it, unfortunately, they would go extinct. And this habitat is particularly susceptible to development because it's high and dry and very desirable. And it's also very, very susceptible to what we call fragmentation, which is the breaking up of large areas by sections of road or development. So it's very important to have intact large acreage of the, uh, acreages of oak scrub for species such as the scrub jay. It's very important to get a close-up of the leaves. It's very important to get a close-up of the top of the leaves and the back of the leaves. Sometimes the only way to distinguish species of oaks is by the, the hairs on the back, which might require magnification with something like a hand lens. You also want to get pictures of the acorns. In this case, this is an immature acorn. Here's an example of some mature acorns on a laurel oak, which is a common oak that you might find in your yards or neighborhoods. Also, if you can get a photograph of the inside of the acorn cap, and to do that, if the acorns are uh, ripe enough, you can simply pull the acorn off and the cap will still be there, and you can take a photograph of the inside of the cap, because the presence or absence of hair inside that cap can be diagnostic for what kind of oak tree it is. So remember, oaks are an extremely important part of our local environment. So we need your help to help us document all the diversity of all 11 species in this area. So get out, do the okey pokey, and we'll see you in October.